Alright, what's up everybody? Welcome to the final episode of my Every Game I've Ever Played tier list. Before I get started onto it, I want to mention that uh, I really enjoyed making these tier lists. These are some of my favorite type of videos to make, so uh, if any of you have any tier lists you'd like me to make, then be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll, you know, I'll see about doing it. Uh, but for this week, we have the Every Action Adventure Game I've Ever Played. Uh, this is I saved this for last because I feel like it had the most games on it that I just really am passionate about. Anyways, let's just get into the first game, which is Far Cry 5. So my Far Cry knowledge is pretty limited. I, as you can see on here, I've only played the third and the fifth one. Uh, the fifth one is easily my favorite. It's the first one I played, but I don't think that has anything to do with it really. I think that the third one is just pretty dated by today's standards, so I enjoyed this game a lot more. I also just love the setting. It's in a town full of uh, redneck cult members who are constantly just causing chaos everywhere around you, and there's this crazy cult leader named uh, Joseph, I think. I remember enjoying the story in this game quite a bit. Uh, my favorite part of this game, though, was the exploration. The map was just so fun to explore. There was all kinds of different things to do. Uh, the, the actual map itself that you would look at, I really liked the, how it was 3D. It was just a really, it was really easy to get around and know where you were going because of how well designed the map was. I don't necessarily have a lot to say about this game, but I did really enjoy it. I liked the story, the open world, the characters. Uh, it was an enjoyable time all the way throughout. I'm gonna go put it A tier. I don't think it's an S tier game. It's got it's kind of too repetitive in the gameplay department for that. It's not too repetitive. It's just you know there's definitely games with more variety than this one. So I think it belongs in A tier. Okay, Uncharted 2: Among Thieves. Uh, yeah, I'm not gonna talk about the Uncharted series too much because I've already done them on the Naughty Dog tier list. I've already got reviews over them. But Uncharted 2 pretty much is one of the highest points in the series, if not the highest point. It's always between 2 and 4 for me. Like I said in the other tier list though, I don't think any of these games necessarily deserve S tier in my opinion. Uh, because I just don't personally enjoy them as much as I used to. Uh, Uncharted 2 was debatably like the peak of the series, so I, I'm just going to put that in A. Uh, I'll go ahead and put all the other Uncharted's on there too, just since I don't, so I don't have to keep bringing it back up. Uh, let's see, Uncharted 3. B, it's not quite as good as the second one, but it's pretty it's pretty good still. It's pretty much just the same thing again, but not quite as good. Uh, one, I'll put in C tier, because it's still it was a good start to the series, but it's very dated by now. I really don't enjoy playing it much at all anymore. Uncharted 4, I enjoy just as much as I enjoy Uncharted 2, if not more because of the gameplay improvements. So I'm gonna put that in A tier as well. Finally, we have Uncharted Lost Legacy, which has a female protagonist, so that's going to be an easy D tier. I didn't enjoy any second of that game. <laughs> no, but actually, Lost Legacy turned out to be pretty good. It surprised me a lot. I can't put it up there with these ones, but I will put it with Uncharted 3. I think it is better than the first one for sure. Uh, probably even better than the third one, so I'll go ahead and do this, just to be clear. Okay, anyways, back to the other games that I have not talked about. Far Cry 3... Uh, I already talked about it a little bit, of course, because I was comparing it to Far Cry 5, but I just really did not enjoy this game as much as I thought I would based on the hype around it. It's pretty widely considered the best Far Cry game, and I can see how at the time it certainly would have been, but I just, it was very dated by now. The traversal is just a nightmare, honestly. Getting around sucks. There's no aerial vehicles, and there's mountains everywhere, so it's it sucks to get around the map. The gameplay also after playing 5 it has even less variety so it's really kind of hard for me to enjoy this game but I will definitely I'll try to be fair and put it in B tier because I know other people would have it higher uh, but just based on my own personal enjoyment of it I'll have to put it there. Okay so God of War 2018 this is the only one I've actually played all the way through and I really really enjoyed God of War. One reason I enjoy this more than the other ones that I've played through a little bit is because I'm just not the biggest hack and slash fan. Uh, I definitely see why people are. It's it's a cool genre, honestly. I'm just it's not really my thing. So the shift in this one to be kind of a more story heavy open world combat game, I really enjoyed that. I liked the combat in this game a lot. I liked the story a lot. The character they added a lot of depth to Kratos' character that just wasn't there before. The gameplay I enjoyed all the way through. I went for the platinum in this game and I would do it again, honestly. Uh, I'm super hyped for Ragnarok after playing this game. I think this is an easy S tier game. All right, so King Kong. This was a movie tie-in to the 2005. I think Peter Jackson movie uh, and movie tying games are notoriously known for just being horrible like they are always just meant to be a crash grab on an existing property or you know just they're always just meant to cash in on something that's popular at the time this game was quite a bit different though it actually they actually put some effort into making this stand on its own and I think this game 
is really pretty good even if you're not a fan of the source material. It's a survival horror game for the most part and it's a really good one at that. There's a lot of great tension here, especially when the T-Rexes are around. I cannot stand those things. The parts where you play as Kong I don't think are as good as the rest of the game, but I still think they are pretty fun, you know? And they show up just rarely enough to where it really doesn't even make that much of a difference, honestly. I'm gonna go ahead and put Kong B tier. I don't, I don't think I can put it up here with like Uncharted 2 and 4, but it's definitely a game worth checking out. <laughs> All right, Saints Row God of Hell. This is a weird Saints Row game to talk about first, but this is a standalone expansion. It's pretty much just what Lost Legacy was to Uncharted, but for Saints Row. So basically the boss that you usually play as in the other Saints Row games has gotten kidnapped by Satan and is being forced to marry his daughter. So <laughs> you can either play as Johnny Gat or Kenzie and you gotta go save him. You gotta go stir up enough chaos in hell to get Satan's attention and finally, you know, confront him at the end. <laughs> it was a good time though. The humor was, you know, on point as Saints Row usually is. Uh, the open world gameplay was a lot of fun. The only time I really hated this game was when I was going for the challenges for trophies, but that's not really a that's a completely optional thing. You don't have to do any of that unless you want all the trophies like me. So I'd say as far as standalone expansions go, this game was really pretty great. I would put it in B tier because it is a standalone expansion, but it's a pretty good one. I'd say it's definitely worth playing if you're a fan of Saints Row. All right, Saints Row 3. This was my introduction into the Saints Row franchise. I know it's I haven't played 2, which is pretty much a crime if you're a Saints Row fan because it's widely considered the best one and I really do need to go back and play it. I know I'll enjoy it. I just haven't got around to it yet. But so far from what I played, the third one is definitely my favorite. I like the humor in this game was perfect. I think it has a much better balance of being grounded and, you know, absurd than uh, Gat of Hell and Saints Row 4 have. So I think they just they found the right spot with this one to where it's just really goofy and just there's, you know, dildo weapons, but it's also like you don't have superpowers and, you know, it, it's a normal it's a normal game somewhat. Now the real downer with this game is that there's really no Johnny Gat because he gets killed off right at the beginning only to return in Saints Row 4 so that kind of sucks that kind of always takes this game a bit down for me but not very much I still think Saints Row 3 is S tier I love this game I come back to it all the time I just played the remaster recently and it was pretty much just as good as I remember yeah it, it holds up pretty well today all right Shadow of Mordor so this is the only Lord of the Rings content I've actually you know fully consumed I've never seen any of the movies it played any of the other games, any of that stuff. But this is a fantastic game. It has it has a unique system called the Nemesis system, to where there's there's just all these uh, orc characters that you will encounter multiple times because they remember you. They remember you hurting them. They remember you killing like their friends. They remember stuff like that to where you'll definitely see more of them, and they're not just name. It just it it makes them something more than just nameless characters. When I really got in this game was whenever I unlocked the branding ability because that allows you to mind control all of these orcs and sort of like build an army with them uh, with all the captains and stuff and that was a lot of fun to do. That made me get way more invested into the experience. I can't remember the story a whole lot so I imagine it wasn't anything insanely good. Uh, I think I'll just go ahead and put an A tier. I really enjoy a lot about this game but like I said I can't remember too much about the story and I think that was fairly important in this game so I don't know I think it'll just put in the A tier all right our first Legend of Zelda game uh, the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker so I'm pretty new to the Legend of Zelda franchise uh, me and my cousin just started playing through every single one about two years ago because none of us had really played any of them we started with Ocarina of Time and we're pretty much just going through the whole mainline Zelda series personally though this is one of my favorites so far it had the different art style it's a lot more cartoonish looking than the rest of the Zelda games I love just exploring the sea to go to different islands and check out all these different crazy characters. It really just opened up the world a lot when you compare it to the previous games. But there, that also, it's kind of a double-edged sword because that traveling across the water is really boring. There's not much at all to occupy you. You're, you're not doing anything except changing the wind direction and following that. But I definitely like the tone of this game a lot. I think this had my favorite uh, incarnation of Ganondorf. I really liked the boss fight with him, especially at the end. It was really cool. Uh, he was a lot more intimidating than usual, just from the way he looked physically. He was a lot bigger and you know, bulkier. But yeah, I really enjoyed this game a lot, and it's going to be a common theme with Zelda games, but I'm going to put this in S tier. Uh, Zelda's just a really quality franchise most of the way throughout, so there's going to be a lot of S tiers in that series. Okay, Tales from the Borderlands. It's a it's a Telltale game, kind of like if you're familiar with The Walking Dead. It's It's just one of those games where you go through and you make choices, and it's just basically a story-driven game. There's not much gameplay involved at all. 
Uh, it's mostly just quick time events and some minor exploration, but mostly it's just story. This is by far my favorite Telltale game. It's so funny all the way through. The writing is so good. The voice acting is great. You have Troy Baker, who plays in every video game as the main character in this one. But even compared to the other Borderlands games, I think this is the funniest one in the series because, of course, it's all about the dialogue and stuff in this game. And one thing I really love about this game is they brought back Handsome Jack, and I think that they did a way better ending for him than Borderlands 2 did. I Borderlands 2, like, he kind of, his story just kind of ended. I'm glad this one picked it up and kind of wrapped it up and gave him a way more satisfying conclusion that the character deserved. But I don't know, it's just crazy because they took a game that, really, the story wasn't the focus in these games. I mean, don't get me wrong, 2 had a pretty great story, uh, but it was always the gameplay that was, you know, first and foremost in these games, in these series. This game somehow took that world and made one of the best stories I've ever seen, and I definitely think that belongs in S tier as well. There's gonna be a lot of S tiers on this list, probably the most out of all of them, I would say. Okay, so A Way Out is a game that you have to play in co-op, like, you actually have to play it with another person or else you can't. It's a split-screen game where you guys have to kind of work together to break your way out of prison, but it's got a story that has some pretty cool twists and turns along the way. I especially like uh, the last ending segment of this game. I won't spoil what happens, but it's a really cool twist on, you know, what you've been doing this whole time. Uh, but not much to say on this game, it's a pretty short game, pretty straightforward game. Uh, I'll go ahead and put it at B tier. I enjoyed this game a lot, but there's not as much to it to compete with those other games above it. Okay, Last of Us Part 2, this is another one. I should have went through and just put these on the list too, because I've also done these on a tier list. Uh, Last of Us 2, I don't like near, I don't like it as much as the first one, but I still think it's a really great game. And in fact, I would even put it in A tier. I think Last of Us 2 still stands out above most games, even though I don't think it quite matches up to the first one. Now that I'm doing that though, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the first one and put that in S tier. Everyone knows The Last of Us is one of the best games ever made. Uh, you know, it told one of the best stories that you've ever seen in gaming, and I don't need to say much about that one because I already have talked about it on my other tier list, but I think it belongs in S tier for sure. Okay, so Shadow of War, this is the sequel to Shadow of Mordor. Um, it, I had a great time with this game, but the story is very bad. I w straight up was skipping every cutscene or I was watching YouTube videos while they were on or you know I was not paying attention to the story after the first like hour because it was just so uninteresting but as far as the gameplay it pretty much took everything the first game did and just expanded upon it. it it expanded upon the nemesis system but it really put a focus on building an army in this game that was kind of the whole point of it you would build an army with all these captains and stuff that you would mind control with your branding ability and you would basically use those to take out other giant forts on like a full-on assault and it was it was a really cool thing to see on that kind of scale it even had some pretty fun side missions i remember like there was a whole giant like world ending threat that happened in one of the side missions um but yeah i really enjoyed shadow of war not quite as much as the first one i would say i have to put it in b tier uh yeah i don't quite think it's as solid as the first one but it does expand upon the gameplay so it's still definitely worth playing in my opinion okay undertale i haven't talked about this much on the channel uh besides in my like top 10 scariest moments in non-horror games video but this is one of my favorite games of all time and i cannot believe that because when i looked at this game on the playstation store i thought it just looked like such a stupid little game i was just gonna waste some time with it basically but no it, there's so much to this game basically this is the best choice game ever made because in other games you make choices and they're supposed to influence the game and stuff but they really don't have much of an impact on the overall story, but in Undertale, you really can, like, change the entire game by doing, by making different choices. Uh, I won't go into detail on the, what the choices are, because I just don't want to, like, spoil anything for anybody who hasn't played this game, because it's, it's such a special experience, I don't want to ruin it for anyone. I'll just say that the weight of your choices in this game is far greater than in any other game I've played. Uh, and the music for this game, it has one of my favorite, if not my favorite, gaming soundtrack ever. Uh, I still listen to it to this day, and I played this game a few years ago, but now I'm sure everyone's heard Megalovania. <laughs> it was a meme for quite a while. But again, since I'm not going into much detail on uh, how the game works, I'm just going to leave it at that, and I'm going to put an S tier easily. If there was a tier above S tier, that's where it would go, so <laughs> it's just no, I love that game a lot. Okay, so the title is not shown here, but this is the Telltale Walking Dead game. Uh, I've only played the first season, there's like four by now. Uh, I've just heard they weren't as good as the first one, so I never even bother bothered with them. But the first one is a really good Telltale game. This is the first one I ever really played. I think this is pretty much what put Telltale on the map. This game just did such a good job at creating such realistic human characters. Probably even more so than the TV show did, even though I think the TV show was really good in its early seasons. 
But anyways, I think this one did such a great job of making its human characters. It just it really makes you care about Lee and Clementine's relationship. You just Clementine, you just want to protect her at all costs, basically. It does have a problem where, and this actually applies for all Telltale games, even Tales of the Borderlands to an extent, uh, where your choices really don't mean much in the end. Like, they make it seem like they do, but people have kind of figured out over the course of these games coming out that they really don't mean much in the end. It changes only slight bits of dialogue, really. It doesn't change much at all. But still, this game offers a story that's just engaging the entire way through. It's super emotional, and it's really heartbreaking at times, but it's a super good game. I have to also put that in S tier. I feel like I'm... <laughs> the S tier is going to have no meaning in this video, but I'm just that's just to show you how quality these games are on this list. And also, I don't really play a lot of games if I haven't already heard a bunch of good things about them. So, it's going to be pretty often that you'll see them in either A or S tier. Because I just, I don't play games that I've already heard bad things about. I don't really pick up a game not knowing anything about it, so, yeah. Alright, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. This is a remake of a freaking, like, Game Boy Color game. But this is the Switch version, and I had a ton of fun with the Switch version. You can somewhat tell that it's a little bit limited because it was a Game Boy game. But I still think it holds up really well considering it was. I don't think it really compares to like the 3D Zelda games that I will talk about in a little bit. But I still think it was a really good time. It had pretty great dungeons, had great puzzles. Uh, I love the soundtrack in this game a lot. I really like the art style. It links adorable in it. But I think the <laughs> just the world in general just looks really good in this art style. The story was also pretty cool. It changed it up a bit. Most games have kind of the same... Uh, story structure in the way that Mario does, but this one kind of changed it. You don't fight Ganon in this game It's just kind of its own isolated little adventure. I think this game can go a tier uh, It's a really good game, but I just, like I said, I just don't think it goes up with like the 3d Zelda games. Okay, so attack on Titan um, I absolutely love this show. This is If you want proof that I love the show, that's my ringtone Anyways, Attack on Titan is pretty much just a game that takes place through the events of the first season, but it's pretty much like a Monster Hunter style gameplay loop where you, you keep hunting these creatures and you try to hit them in their certain spots to get resources to make better equipment to be more efficient at killing the creatures. It's a really fun gameplay loop in Monster Hunter, but in this game it gets pretty repetitive since this, you're killing the same monsters the whole time. Uh, which are titans, of course. I'd say they made the gameplay feel pretty good in this game. It's really fun to use your ODM gear, move it around the city and crap. But it does just get old because you're doing the same exact thing the entire game. Especially when you're trying to go for trophies at the end. It's really not fun. It's really repetitive after that point. Um, so it's a decent game, but it gets really repetitive. So I'm going to have to put it in B tier. Because it's fun while it lasts, but I would recommend just beating the story and then probably not playing it anymore. <laughs> Alright, Spider-Man PS4. This is uh, Insomniac Spider-Man from like 2018 or so. Uh, this is such a great Spider-Man game. They got the controls in this game perfectly down. The web swinging physics are so fun to use. I could just You can just swing around the city without even any objective and you can have a good time for a while. Uh, the combat, it pretty much adopted Arkham's combat style, but it's a little more fast paced and stuff because uh, Spider-Man's more agile and... You know, that's just his style. And I haven't really played much of the Arkham games, so I feel like this is kind of a more refined version of that combat. Uh, it uses, you can use all sorts of things in the environment to help you out. There's all sorts of gadgets that, you know, help you take out the enemies. Oh, in the story, this is pretty much my favorite Spider-Man story, I think. Uh, of course, they had a lot more time to flesh out the world in this game. It's, it's roughly like a 15 hour game or so. I don't know exactly how long, but a lot longer than a movie. So they had a lot of time to build up all these characters, you know, introduce the Sinister Six, really make you uh, care about Doc Ock and stuff before he goes bad. The only thing I really don't care for in this game is the times that you're not playing as Spider-Man. Like, when you're Miles or Mary Jane, pretty much what you're doing is wishing that you were playing as Spider-Man again. <laughs> nah, but these segments are just really boring. I mean, you kind of just walk around and kind of gather intel for Peter and I don't know they're, they're just usually not that fun to play through but the majority of the game you're playing as Spider-Man so that's good uh, I think this is an A tier game it's a really great game but I don't know if I would put it up here with these okay as I was talking about Spider-Man I realized I didn't include Miles Morales and I have played that game so uh, basically I enjoyed Miles Morales quite a bit I don't think it was quite as good as the original Spider-Man game because this is pretty much a standalone expansion the way Lost Legacy was. And I just don't think Miles in this game was as interesting as a character as Peter. Uh, I really like the Miles from Into the Spider-Verse. I wish he was kind of more like him. But in this game, he was just kind of a little more bland. I, he was likable, but he was a little more bland in this game. They did improve some things. Like I think the side missions are more fun in this game. 
Uh, I like the more personal story in this game because it's a, it's a lot smaller scale. But aside from that, I don't know. I think I, I think it was a really good game. I just think it wasn't as good as the other one. So I think these here would be pretty good for it. All right, Skyrim. It, I haven't talked about this at all on the channel, but this is one of my favorite games of all time as well. There, I remember there was the time I was completely obsessed with this game. Like it was all I would think or talk about. It was all I would do after school. <laughs> there's just so much to experience in Skyrim. I mean, even aside from the main story, there's just so many side quest lines that are so fun to go through. Whether it's like the Dark Brotherhood, the Thieves Guild, or, or even the DLC. The DLC in this game is really good, both of them. There's two really massive DLCs in this game. They're both really good. They add a lot to it. The Skyrim was the first time I had ever experienced the feeling in a game of just being able to go off and do whatever. Like, go in whatever direction I want to. Because I remember the first, when you leave the first, like, village that you start at in the game, I remember just being completely aimless. Like, I did not know what to do, where to go. And part of that was because I was a kid, and I didn't really understand how quest markers worked and all that. But still, I mean, it is, it does allow you to do whatever you want to do. You don't have to continue the main storyline after that first introduction. You can go off and do whatever side quests you want. You can go off and just explore wherever you want. You can do whatever. I think Skyrim did a great job at making RPG elements accessible to anyone. Uh, it's pretty simplified compared to like other RPGs, but that kind of works in its favor because it just you know allows anybody to be able to get into it. I think Skyrim is easily an S tier game. I come back to this game still to this day, and it came out in 2011. Uh, they have milked it a bit. I mean, it's about time for Elder Scrolls 6, but. <laughs> I mean, it's a, if they're going to milk any game, it might as well be this one. Okay, Deltarune. This is uh, the next game that Toby Fox is working on, the, the one who made uh, Undertale. Uh, this is just Deltarune Chapter 1. This is all that's out so far. It's pretty much a demo. It's the first two hours or so of the game. Uh, I really enjoyed this a lot. I think it's a perfect way so far to follow up Undertale. It It's showing signs of like connecting to Undertale somehow, but it's not a sequel. Uh, there's lots of theories on how they connect, but I'm already really into the story. I like the characters. The soundtrack, even in just this chapter one here, is really solid. It's it's reminding me a lot of the quality of Undertale's. I like pretty much everything about this game, uh, but it, since it is a demo, I'm just gonna have to let it sit in A tier. I can't put it up there with the other ones. It's not the full game yet. I'm sure that once the full game comes out, it probably will be an S tier, and I definitely will talk about this game once it's out. I will. I don't know if I'll do like a playthrough, but I'll definitely do a review or something. Okay, Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask. This is a very weird game. Uh, it's a very weird Zelda game, but also just in general, it's very weird. Way before I even played this game, I used to get terrified of it as a kid because of the Ben Drown creepypasta. I'm sure a lot of people have heard of that because it's a, it's a fairly popular creepypasta online. But, I mean, geez. I was scared of this game before I even played it, so. Everything about the world and the characters in this game is just super unsettling. I mean, it's supposed to be. I mean, there's all kinds of theories about how Link is actually dead in this game, and there's, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff like that that wouldn't have been spawned if this game hadn't been as weird as it was. I actually really didn't care for this game the first time I played through it, uh, because it was just really hard for me to figure out. I didn't really understand how it worked at all. But I went, I went through it again for a second time on the 3DS, and I really enjoyed it playing it again. This game doesn't have as many dungeons as like the other Legend of Zelda games, but the dungeons it does have are really solid. I mean, these are some of the most memorable dungeons in the series to me. And part of that's because they use this mask mechanic where you get to control different you know species from this series, like the Goron, uh, the Zora, and the Deku, I think. But yeah, those add a lot of gameplay variety, and it just keeps the whole experience fresh. Uh, I think Majora's Mask is an S tier game. Again, it's a theme with Zelda games. All right, Infamous Second Son. This was the first. This is my first PS4 game, so I'm pretty nostalgic about this game. And I have played some of the other Infamous games, but not. I haven't completed them or anything. I just I don't feel like I've played enough of them to be able to put them on the list. But it just it did a great job at showing off the power of the PS4 early on. Uh, the powers look great in this game. Uh, and just the whole game in general looks really good. But uh, the gameplay in this game I thought was the the obvious highlight of it. I mean, the powers are really fun to use. You get all kinds of different uh, elements to play with. But I wouldn't say the writing is as good as the other games. I think Cole McGrath is a lot more compelling of a protagonist than uh, Delson Rowe in this game. But I don't know. I mean, I was more playing this game to use cool powers and stuff, so that's not a huge issue for me. But I think it's an A tier game. I don't. Th it could be better if like the writing was better and stuff. But the gameplay is top notch, so I think it belongs in A tier. Okay, Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Me and my cousin have a very unpopular opinion on this game. Some people say this is like their actual favorite game of all time. 
Uh, but we were literally miserable playing this game. Like, we had z almost zero fun the entire time we played this game. And some of that might have been to our own fault. We probably didn't properly explore and get the proper equipment to make it less difficult of a game. But we were just struggling the entire time, and we just never knew where to go next. We always had to kind of look up where to go. And because of that, it's kind of all a blur for me. I just remember not enjoying this game much. Um, I'm going to have to put it in C tier. I know that's, like, probably a crime, because I'm sure it's... I'm sure in most people's eyes it belongs in either A or S tier, but I just, we didn't enjoy that game very much at all, and I think I just have to put an S tier for, or a C tier for me personally. Okay, so Shadow of the Colossus, I did not fully finish this game until the PS4 remake came out, and I'm so mad at myself for not finishing this game on the PS2 when I was younger. Shadow of the Colossus is a game where you go from one boss fight to the next, but it's such a unique game because each boss fight is essentially a giant puzzle to solve. But the puzzle is is a monster. It's a living, it's walking around. It's basically a level that's walking around and you have to go solve it. The real fun part of this game is figuring out how to take down each of these monsters. Once you figure out how to take them down, you can do it pretty quickly. I mean, there's speed runs that you can do and you, you can probably take it out in a couple of minutes after that. But the real fun is, again, trying to find out how to take it down. But it also has something that video games really didn't have at the time, which is a, a story. That, <laughs> I mean, the, back on the PS2, the most you'd get for, in a story is probably, you know, a few cutscenes every now and then. Like in Crash Bandicoot, like you get a cutscene at the beginning and like at the end. But this game went a lot deeper and it actually told a really emotional story. I remember when I finished this game on the PS4, I was like really sad actually. I was just kind of, <laughs> and it, it made this game stay on my mind for a long time. I mean, I couldn't think about anything else for a while. It was really impactful. I think Shadow of the Colossus is definitely an S tier game. It's one of the greatest games ever made, and to think that it was made on the PS2 is just absolutely unbelievable. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is this, so this is the first Zelda game I ever played, my first experience with it, and I was actually fully expecting to think that this game was very dated. I thought I wouldn't like it as much as all the hype told me I would, but I am fully on board with the hype. This game is one of the best games ever made still. And I have no nostalgia influencing that decision because I didn't play it until like two years ago. I was like 16, 17. And it's just weird because as soon as that title screen popped up with that beautiful music, I immediately knew that I was like going to love this game. <laughs> I don't know what it was. There was something so comforting about that title screen with the music. But no, personally, this game had overall my favorite dungeons in the series uh, that I've experienced so far. I really liked all of them. There was uh, like eight main dungeons, I think. Maybe more than that, but... They were all really fun to go through, they had cool mechanics, but they all required a pretty good amount of thought. And even the water temple, which is one people absolutely hate, was actually one of my favorite temples in the game. And I think people hate it because it's really hard, and because it's got a tedious thing in the, in the original, where you had to keep going into your menu to remove your boots, you had to put them back on. Which was really annoying, but to me that didn't take it down all the way. I still really enjoyed the water temple, I thought it was so much fun. And the story in this game for an N64 game was super dark and super engaging. And considering this game came out so long ago and I don't have any nostalgia, and it still holds up that well to me, that's insane. Uh, easily S tier. Uh, that's such a great game. Oh, and I just realized I didn't really talk about the music in Majora's Mask, but Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time have two of my favorite soundtracks in gaming ever. Majora's Mask is a little higher than Ocarina of Time, I think, but Ocarina of Time is still a super solid soundtrack, full of tracks I still listen to today, so that's a really great game and it easily deserves S tier. All right, Pokemon Fire Red. This is the only Pokemon game I've actually played all the way through. I played a little bit of Emerald, never finished it, but no, I got super into Fire Red. It was back in a time where I had like the Game Boy stuff on my phone, so I put a good 60-70 hours into this game. It had quite a bit of memorable locations, specifically Lavender Town, which uh, most of you are probably familiar with because of the creepy song from it, but Lavender Town was such a cool place to explore. It even had some fun little characters to interact with throughout the game. You have like a rival who you're constantly competing with, you kind of you battle him a couple times throughout the game. Uh, there's some fun little Team Rocket villains and stuff. Overall, I think this is an A tier game. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, I'm not the hugest Pokemon fan, but I really did like this one. Alright, this is a, <laughs> kind of a weird game to end the series off with, but Saints Row 4, um, this is where the series went completely bonkers. Like I said, 3 had a, a really good balance where it was it was absurd, but it was still pretty grounded. I mean, you had dildo bats, but you, know, you were still just a normal human. This game, you get promoted to the President of the United States, and you have superpowers, and you're fighting aliens. 
<laughs> yeah, this game's more along the lines of like a crackdown, which I haven't played, but I, that's just what I've heard and I've seen gameplay, it looks a lot like that. But the open world gameplay is still a lot of fun to me. It carries over the same hub world as Saints Row 3, but I think it works a little better in Saints Row 4, because in Saints Row 3, it, it, it was kind of a bland hub world, honestly. But in Saints Row 4, you're running around the map really insanely fast, so it really didn't need to be that interesting. But I think the writing in this game was still on point. Like, I think it, the humor was great. They nailed all that. Uh, Johnny Gat returns. Which it does kind of screw up Saints Row 3. It kind of takes all the weight out of his death. But, I don't know. I'm glad he's back, honestly. Especially since I got to play as him in Gat Out of Hell after that. But no, I, I mean, I do wish this series would have stuck with its kind of more grounded, but still absurd approach to its games. But I'm not gonna lie, I do have a ton of fun with this game. I still think the gameplay is so much fun. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in A tier. It's I wouldn't quite put it up with Saints Row 3, but I really definitely enjoy this game a lot. And I really hope that they make a Saints Row 5 sometime soon, because that would be awesome. Alright, well anyways, that's gonna be it for this tier list series. Uh, I had a lot of fun making these, and like I said, if you guys have any other tier lists you want me to make, uh, comment them down below, and I will definitely think about doing one of them, because I really enjoy making these tier lists. They're a lot of fun to do. Anyways, if you enjoyed this series, uh, I ask that you please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time with whatever I do next.